phase two is about to start. That's going to be the suspension components. Just received Cogent DDC kit, new springs, Mojave Pro rear shock, and of course fork oil and everything. So we're about to get on this and upgrade the suspension on the Mighty DR650 is DR changes part two. Once you've got your your uh, DR650 up on a lift and pretty secure, first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove the front wheel. And be very careful when you're working with this um, axle clamp, for lack of a better way to put it. These bolts are small, you don't want to over torque them. Of course, I put Loctite on mine like I do everything else on the DR. Just to keep from vibration or something messing it up. This is a 10 millimeter. Axle itself, where it's secured is a 19 millimeter. Come on, there we go. I like to support the tire when I'm doing this. You can see the forks will kind of spread apart just a tad. Also be very careful with the speedometer assembly. That can be an issue. If it breaks, it's very expensive. There we go, now it's broken loose. Should slide right out. There we go. Again, watch the speedometer assembly. We'll put that beautiful new wheel right there and move on to the next item. Next, you're going to loosen <clears throat> the upper clamps. This is the order it's done. I don't know for sure, but I believe this is so when you, it, this might be putting some pressure on the fork caps. And the idea is to keep, keep this from making it more difficult to loosen the fork caps. Remember, you want to do this, just the uppers, right? I'm going to do this first. Next, you're going to want to rotate some of this stuff out of the way as far as the bars. And I think I showed you earlier how I marked it to make sure that I can put it back in the, hopefully the same spot. But I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to cut to this. This is You get the idea on this. Nothing crazy. What I did, I went ahead and removed, just removed the bar to get it completely out of the way because it was not going to work. I got the right one here. It'll be 24. And you've got this little thing right here that secures the brake cable or brake line, I should say. Take that off. Next, the brake caliper. And you can put the axle back in there, which I may have to do. There we go. Or I may not have to. When I reassemble it, I will be putting this, putting the wheel or the, or at least the axle shaft back in there. One of the things I like to do when I'm taking stuff apart and I know and putting it back together is. I reuse where it was mounted so I screw this back in here because I am famous at losing bolts so just a little helpful hint takes a little more time but that's it then one of my loops 550 cord not just for camping and I'm gonna hang this the brake caliper okay 
Next, upper clamp. It's tight. Maybe that sucker pop loose, huh? And it's no joke. Okay, once you actually get these suckers loose enough, they start to slide out. There we go. And there is the first of your fork legs right there. Okay, next, fork boots. Loosen the clamps up here. Hopefully you can see that. Two of them, one up top and one in the bottom. Interesting, kind of sticky. There we go. Fork boot off. Okay, where to go? Finish taking this off. Fork cap. One of the things I noticed, if you want specific sockets, it gets to be a little challenging to find them for some reason. Everybody wants to sell you a set. They don't want to sell you an individual socket. Just something I ran into when I was gathering up some tools for this job. Okay, fork cap. Spacer. Washer. Okay, now we're going to dump the oil. And the spring, of course. Let's pump it. Get all that oil as much as possible out of there. Sounds like too much Taco Bell and some beers, huh? Keep pumping it to get all that oil out of there. And by the way, that's the stock uh, fork oil for the DR650 2020. that sit gingerly you've done the first side obviously the next thing is you just do the exact same thing to the other fork leg I've got a bunch of crap in the way here that's from my little dashboard my pro cycle dashboard which is great however it caused a little bit of issues but I'm gonna do the other side and I'll get back to you Okay, pump the oil out of the tube. Let it sit upside down for approximately, let's see, it was about an hour, hour and a half. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to get some oil in there. Refill the oil. I'll go ahead and set this down. And I'm going to use Mama's measuring cup. And it's 600. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with 300, pump it down, and then use the other and do put the remaining 300 in there. That's 600 milliliters. So we're going to get it up to 300. Okay, put this top back on. The funnel in there. Pour in our new fork oil. You may hear it gurgling, you may not, I don't know. Making all kinds of magic sounds, eh? Gonna do another 300. So they say 600 milliliters per fork leg. Okay, that should be six. Well, I don't have to use the funnel, I don't think. Hopefully I can reuse this sucker for pancakes or something. And just keep pumping this sucker. You're trying to get all the air bubbles out. That's the idea behind it. Not hearing anything. Okay, it's supposed to be 130 millimeters. And what I got is I went and got a cheap Harbor Freight ruler and a cheap light. Okay, there's some little bubbles in there. So actually, I don't know if you can see it in there. I hope you can. I am going to keep pumping just a little bit and get some of those air bubbles out. You know, I think in this case, uh, more is better. Much better. Okay, so 130 is what it's supposed to be with it compressed. That's the top. That is pretty close. I might add to add might have to add just a tad. Let's see. Yep. Well, I added some more and it was too much. So what I used, this is Tony Satchery's Cajun Creole Injector. You use this to inject uh, stuff into chickens and stuff like that. Another piece of kitchen gear. So I sucked out that much, a few cc's. So now it's set right. Again, you can use things you wouldn't believe you can use.
Okay, next, using your DDC install tool and the new spring, and it is a straight rate spring, not a progressive spring. And the idea, of course, is to seat the DDC onto the top of the damper, damper, damper rod head. And then you pull this joker out. Okay, next. Going to use the washer and the spacer. And it should be seven to ten millimeters. I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this cap on and yeah that's going to sit there nicely I'm going to get some oil on that get some oil on the ring getting oil everywhere. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, had to put the fork boot on. Now that I've got that, gently slide her up in here. Oops, come on now. Nothing wants to work today, huh? Let's get this down. Of course that happened. Hey, something I did, uh, when I put this through, when I put the fork tube up into the clamps, the triple clamps, right? You can see right here, I tightened this first, not all the way, just enough to hold the upper part of the fork leg, just to keep it from sliding back down. And then now I'm going to go back and tighten the lower clamp. Got everything put back together. A um, couple things on that is, and I mentioned this earlier about the top clamps. Do those just to hold, don't tighten them all the way. Do that to hold them, the tubes in place when you put them in. Overall, it's not too bad. Take your time, drain everything out. And so far, just by pushing on it, I'm already noticing a huge difference from what it was. More responsive, just pushing on the front. Um, and the rear will be done here soon, pretty quick. That is part two of this, so stay tuned. Um, hope you enjoyed this one. As always, guys, like and subscribe. There's more to come. <clears throat> hope you found this useful. And as always, cheers. <laughs>